Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Today's message is titled, <clears throat> In the Twinkling of an Eye, You Are About to Be Changed Forever. I wanted to encourage you guys today. I know there's many on this channel, many that watch these videos that have contacted me in the past and that continue to contact me, saying you can't wait for heaven. Many of you some of you are bound to a wheelchair for most, of, for most, if not all, of your life. Some of you have other physical disabilities that have impacted you for a majority of your life. I just wanted to encourage you, all of you today, that this isn't your home. And just hang on, because you are about to be changed forever. <clears throat> it reminds me of when I was younger, when I would walk through cemeteries, I remember seeing all the graves, especially ones of like kids in wheelchairs leaping up out of their wheelchairs, reaping up that reaching up to heaven, excuse me, and saying something like this on the tombstone, like I'm going home or, you know, so something similar to that. Um, and I wanted to encourage you, if you're saved, if you have Jesus Christ, heaven is coming. Just hang on. Soon, there will be no more pain, no more tears, no more suffering, no more death. And I just wanted to do a video again encouraging, encouraging many of you out there that whether death comes first or the rapture happens, again, you are going home. But I look around this world right now and I'm connecting the dots and I'm looking at everything converging and I'm reading my Bible and I'm confident saying this, in the twinkling of an eye, you are about to be changed forever. And I wanted to go over a set of scripture with you today, which again, I believe will encourage many of you. First one Go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to read verse 35 to 53. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Though full, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear it grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown is in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, <clears throat> the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be that which was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven, as is the earthy. Such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Listen to this next part. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. We cannot enter heaven in these bodies. We must be changed. We're in corrupted bodies. When the rapture happens, we're going to be changed. We're going to receive our glorified bodies, folks. Think about this. After Jesus rose from the dead, he ate and drank with his disciples. 
He was able to appear and suddenly disappear and show up somewhere else immediately. Imagine with your glorified bodies what you're going to be able to do for eternity. You know, it reminds me of what the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Folks, we can't even imagine it. Our little earthly bra earthy brains, excuse me, can't even imagine what heaven's going to be like. We can't even imagine what our glorified bodies are going to do. For those of you out there, again, that are struggling, that are weary, that are worn down, that are tired, again, this isn't your home. We have an eternity to look forward to, and we're going to be out of these bodies. These corrupted bodies must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. For those of you, again, that are in wheelchairs or have some other physical disability, just hang on. Hang on. You have no idea what's coming. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 to 23, the Apostle Paul says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the son, manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. Hang on. In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, we're going to be changed, folks. We're going to be here one moment, and then bam, at the appointed time when Jesus calls us home, we're going to meet him in the air, but we're going to be changed. Because again, we cannot enter heaven in these bodies. We're going to be changed into our glorified bodies, and the Lord Jesus is going to catch us up. He's going to our pot to us, suddenly sees us up. Snatch us out of harm's way before the tribulation period begins to be with him forever in heaven. So be encouraged. I look around this world right now. I'm connecting the dots. I'm watching convergence. I'm watching the Bible play out in front of us. And I can't sit here and tell you when the rapture is going to happen because I don't know. But I'm watching with you and I'm connecting the dots. And all I can say is soon. The time is at hand. You're about to go home to be with the Lord forever. But whether death comes first or the rapture, the bottom line is you're going to be changed. You're going to go from corrupted to incorruptible, from mortal to immortality. And our little earthly brains can't comprehend what's in store for us. Like in John chapter 14, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. He said in the beginning of John chapter 14, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And again, then he says, um, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Folks, we can't even imagine what heaven's going to be like. And we can't even imagine what our glorified bodies are going to be able to do. But this is what I can tell you. Everything's going to change in the twinkle of an eye. And that day is approaching and if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ and you're not saved, I implore you to get saved right here and right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Here's what you have to understand. All of us are sinners. We have all sinned against a holy, a just, and a perfect God. And our sin penalty separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves us so much that he would be born of a virgin, he became flesh, he dwelt among us, and he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary so you could be reconciled to God through his son, what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross at Calvary? The gospel of your salvation is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. It's believing. It's putting your faith in your trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ for you on that cross at Calvary. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, paying your sin debt in full, that you can never pay on your own, so you can be forgiven of your sins and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, 
He was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell is a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die in your sin, rejecting Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he is the only name that's going to save you. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Virgin Mary is not going to save you. Buddha is not going to save you. Allah is not going to save you. Muhammad is not going to save you. Dead saints are not going to save you. Father McMuffin down the street is not going to save you. The New Age movement is not going to save you. Religion is not going to save you. Your own human efforts, your own works are not going to save you. There is only one way to the kingdom of heaven and one name that's going to save you. And again, that is Jesus Christ and him alone. But right here, it's time to repent. Repent means to change your mind. You need to go from unbelief, dead in your sins, to belief, a new creature in Christ right now, and agree with God about your sin condition, that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, that you can't save yourself, that Jesus Christ did it all for you on the cross at Calvary by shedding his precious blood. And again, you're believing in putting your faith in your trust again in the gospel of your salvation, which is Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and he rose from the dead. He resurrected on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures. Time is running out. Jesus is coming one day soon. I don't know exactly when, but I'm reading my Bible, and all I can tell you is it is one day very soon. And there's going to be a sudden translation in the twinkle of an eye. Believers in Christ are going to be here one moment, and then bam, they're going to be called home. Their bodies are going to be changed into glorified bodies to be with Jesus for, uh, in heaven forever. And I want you to be a part of that event. But forget that for a second. You could die tomorrow. You could die at any moment. We're not promised our next breath, and I want you to go to heaven. But Jesus is the only way there. So I'm imploring you again, if you're watching this and you're not saved, get saved right now. Today is the accept Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised. God bless you all. Keep watching with me. Keep looking up. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he's coming. And he's coming quickly, one day, very soon. God bless you all.